Okay, so this is a deck profile for a deck I entered in a tournament and got absolutely smashed, but there was more things outside of that that actually got me smashed, which has a bit of potential. And it's quite budget friendly if you have a couple of GB1 cards and just some went to a pre-release of Rummy and have about like 30 extra bucks. So first card in the deck, Mick the Ghosty, wait, Matt the Ghosty, he's your starter, he acts like the other one except the other, the grade one from GB1, except he's a Ghosty, that's like all you could use him for is just to put combo pieces in. You also attack with him a lot to keep like your grade 1s like in this kind of deck done, but like for now he's just like sort of generic-ish. Uh, grade Freeze, uh, Queen Ghosty's leader Dimitra. She's a really good card that I think is kind of underrated. Uh, she probably your main Grade Freeze just because you can really set up with her on play skill if you get Ghosties. But since Ghosties are kind of hard to get, you can just use her for like sort of a milling purpose. Like it's sort of actually pretty consistent if you get lucky because you don't play that many Ghosties technically. Uh, yeah, her second skill is okay with the, another grade free you play, but like overall, she's really there for a ghosty name. <clears throat> second grade free you play is a uh, Vampire Princess of Starlight Night Rose. You could play the other one, and it could potentially be better because it is better on the ride. But this one, A, it's sort of easy to get, and B, you can because it doesn't have any hype, so it's kind of easy to get, because everyone's going up to the Night Fog. And B, since it's on a rear guard, you can sort of abuse it in a Ghosties deck, because, like, you'll just call the Ghosties, and you'll be like, oh, I'll just call something else, and then you boost, and you got, like, a 10k booster, and it recalls really fast. So it's really powerful in this kind of a deck, if you don't have, like, the money to get, like, all the Necrolazies and that, so it's almost, like, the preferred choice. Although the other one's okay as well. Uh, Fabian the Ghosty. Awesome, awesome card. But the main thing that makes this card cool is like when he puts from the deck, you can call him anyway. But he's just good in general to call because he's really powerful uh, to just for his effect to get plus 4k, which is a magic number when you go plus 4, 7, and that's 21. Magic numbers against 11ks. And even though he's 10k, since he works as a ghosty, he kind of actually is more defensive than you think because of the grade one that's the best in the deck, which is Quincy the Ghosty. Uh, when he, you can pull him from the drop zone really easily, because like if you put a, like a trigger or a grade zero back into your deck, you can call him, which uh, is really powerful with the card known as what I play two of, which is Madness Frankie. He may not be a ghosty, he may not be a ghosty, but how this works is you'll get like a trigger, you'll like any trigger, and you'll like rest it, and then you'll put pull make it a 10k booster, and then you'll put it back, and then you'll call him. And he works like as an interceptor from anywhere, that's like his kind of skill if you have a ghosty. But even if he's not intercepting on Night Rose as the Vanguard, like he's good because he can be called whenever you want, so you'll never not have a full column with this guy. So like he's a four of. And he's a two of, because, like, he's just really good. Like, you get one in, you just keep calling him as hollow, and he's just, like, really powerful. And he's really cheap, so he's really powerful. Uh, fourth stride fodder. Good for getting night rows on the rear. Good for filling in your drop zone. Good for all kinds of things. He's cheap. He's great. Reason why meta decks at the moment, like budget versions of the meta decks are like so cheap at the moment I find is because their stride fodders are just always cheap compared to like Narukami or whatever. Uh, one Bale the Ghosty, mostly used for 8k beatings, nothing else, and being a Ghosty and filler. Uh, one Evil Shade, 10k booster, uh, mostly, best thing about him though is the fact that he discards two every time you attack, so you feel you, if you somehow don't get your combos off, really good card. <clears throat> One filler that kind of is actually better than I think <clears throat> is Samurai Spirit. Now, Samurai Spirit, when you counterblast, you can call him, which goes really well with Night Rose skill because you call him, and then you can activate Night Rose with a Soul Blast. So he's kind of, he's kind of awesome like that. 
Now, I didn't play any PGs, and I'll explain that later with this deck. But you can kind of get the feeling of like how it's going. Okay, probably the best card in the entire deck, like by a lot, is this ghosty here. Clammy the ghosty. This card is amazing. Like, he is awesome. Just like, the best ever. Plus 2k when you have 5 in your drop zone. That's nothing. He's a, te he's a 11k in disguise. Uh, but the real cool thing is when you get 10 cards in your discard, he becomes a 16k beater just by himself. And he gets 10k shield. Not 10k intercept, 10k shield. So if you have him in your hand, you could literally like play one and then do and guard with him and it's still 10k. He's really defensive. And he really makes this deck work function because like you can just rely on your G guards and use him for like like as the trigger lineup. And he's not weak. So he's offensive, defensive, and amazing at the same time. Undead Pirate of the Frigid Knight. Okay. This guy is filler, but he gets ten you get he becomes eleven K beater really early if you have less cards, which you will because you're always gonna be rushing a bit at the start. This is, as you can probably guess by now, it's sort of rushing, or a little bit of a rush deck. Not quite 70s, but it's still pretty heavily offensive. So, this card is just good for, like, little pokes. Or you could use him to, like, stand. He's pretty good early game, and, like, he kind of catches people off guard. Alright, this card is sort of just there for Ghosty, which is... What's his name? Heskith the Ghosty. Uh, 3k plus on the first turn, you're usually going to intercept with him, he's kind of meh, because the deck's not fully ghosty, but he's good for an intercept, he's good for early game pressure, he's an intercept, whatever, he's okay. He doesn't have any real combos, except he's a ghosty, which makes him okay. Uh, filler, I really want to replace this guy, and that's King Serpent. Sure, he counter charges, this deck is pretty counter charge heavy, but you would rather have something powerful for the early game. Or something more defensive, or a ghosty. This is literally filler, because I made this from like a, tr a pre-release set, and it's actually okay, and a bit of GB1 stuff. Uh, this guy can be replaced with virtually anything, like literally get anything else, and like your deck will work, but he is okay. Not the best. Okay then, trigger lineup, and grade zeros. I have two Chappy the Ghosty, can be replaced with another grade 1, can be replaced with four grade 2s. He's not that useful, but he can be good for getting set up in your discard, especially if you want to use the defensive Ghosties, or putting like the shape, or putting like 10k beaters in there. Uh, you do want to have mostly Ghosty Strides, like on the day I did have Ghosty Stands that were just there, but for the moment I just have generics. They Make the deck slightly more inconsistent, but they're alright. The thing with this deck is you want four stands, so you also play Screaming Banshee. So eight stand, because the whole point of the deck is it sort of tricks the opponent into playing like Night Rose, which is guard the Vanguard because it has crits, and like then you like sort of guard that. But in this one, it's just sort of like you want them not to be guarding your Vanguard. <laughs> Ironically, you just want them to be thinking you play lots of crits when you don't. Because you only play four. If you can get this, well, you play. Yeah, you only play four. But you can get. I would recommend four the ghosty, but anything else works. It's just sort of there for like the little punches when people don't expect. But really, the thing's all about the eight stand. Because you just want to restand your 21k beaters and keep going. This stand is also good because if you, if you hollow it, like which you can do with Night Rose's ability, it gets 7k, which is a pretty good beater. And it makes uh, it makes your grade three ghosty twenty one k, which is pretty good. And then you bind it and draw a card, so she's really power. She's really potent, especially in the discard. And as I said earlier, the trick is you can in the end just stand it, call a card, and then put it back in the deck, and then call another card, and then four ghosty heals because I have them. You can use the new ghosty that came out, but I didn't get much seventeen. 2017, so I just use this, the other one's better, use that, even though technically your G zone in order of importance, dismal for filler, but the most important one and probably you want to play for is the di Diabolist of Tombs Negro mode, 
This card is so underrated. 15k for basically nothing. Use her. She, you don't even, this is the reason why this can get away without perfect guards. She is so fat. She will block any big hit for you. And then you can use, and if they poke you, which is a lot of the game now, is poking with little things, you can just, you can make up for your weaknesses with, with Quincy, because he'll just, he'll just intercept from the back row, and you can pull him out anyway. And you're going to have a lot of stands and draw, so like, you can use her to block any big attack, and it's like, a cost that's non-existent, so she's really good. On offensive strides, we have the most best card ever. Most best card ever, English. Obadiah, freaking amazing card in this deck. Call that your 5k intercepts. You call more if you have Night Rose on the bench. On the rear guard, like it's so weird. Like it's just so weirdly good. Like you just set up so much stuff with this. And you put like, and you put your grade freeze in to get like 14k. And then you got like a 17k by putting a trigger back. So you'll be like, you'll basically go stride, and then you'll put this in, and then you'll call it, and then you go 14, and you'll like, put a trigger, call, call, and then you have 10k, 7k with intercept, 21, with like lots of stands, and you just, like it snowballs so quickly, because like you'll just be like, oh 26, they'll guard it, and then you'll just like restand this over and over again, and eventually they're gonna kill, they're just gonna die from it. Massively good card in this deck, like just, he is so, like, he's kind of okay in other decks, but in this deck, he's just amazing. One, possibly want two if you want, is the Eclipse Dragonhawk. He's pretty luck-based, but he get, he pretends that you're finishing him with him. So they are going to perfect guard him, which means they don't have perfect guards for your, for your rears. Or they'll G-guard and try and block him, but, like, he's just really quick, no counter blast, you just call stuff, and you just... And you might like hit it. You might hit Fabian, and Fabian will come out, or like in an emergency. Like he's he's kind of just there as like a pro, as a fake finisher, even though you're actually just going to try and kill him with your regards. Uh, two Snow Element Voucher. This card is sort of filler, but if you want your heals and you're kind of desperate, he can be good. And if you ride into Fabian, like he's really good stride then. But you probably still want to go Ghosty, but he's okay. Uh, riding, and I play one of this just to unflip, but I play like whatever, like it's not necessary. Okay. The point of the deck, <coughs> and the main thing that makes it kind of good, is just the fact that you can put triggers back. So you can put like your, like you put this, stand, you pull that, you pull this, put it back, you stand it to call that. And then you use like... Like, it doesn't matter if you ride Fabian, because, like, everything's hitting 16, so it's, like, 10k anyway, so it's, like, who cares? Just put two. Just hope they don't get, like, 40 magic numbers, and not even Fabian at the ride is okay. And he has, like, the... And he's a 14k hit, so he's actually pretty strong. Like, as a... As both a rearguard attacker, and he's not complete waste on the Vanguard, because he's just a ghosty, so he has defensive plays. I mean, Demetrius is the best, but like the pro every like ride in this deck has some problems, so you sort of play a lot to like throw your opponent off. Because like Demetrius cost is too kind of is too soul blast, which this requires soul blast. This is kinda like the only problem with Demetra. And Night Rose is Night Rose. Not as defensive, but you can just like wipe them out. Like if you go Night Rose, you can just like play like almost full on rush. So yeah, that's basically the deck. And what makes this deck kind of cheap, outside of the ghosty stuff, some of the ghosty stuff, maybe, and Night Rose, is the fact that you could get basically all these cards are commons from, like, a pre-release. You could literally find these in a pre-release for, like, nothing, and then get some, like, GB1, and, like, even then, you could probably find, like, some alternative, like, 10k bases, or, like... Like some different sort of 8k boosters or something to like make your 11k's more annoying or your like 12k's or something. Like, it just hits magic numbers so easily that like it's kind of cheap for like how you can do it and all you need is a lot of stands. But like, if your opponent doesn't know what they're playing against, it's actually surprisingly potent. Like, it, I beat Ultima with this, so it can't be all bad, right? And yeah.
nothing in this deck is that expensive except for maybe Night Rose. And you don't need perfect guards. So, good luck and I hope someone can build this deck better than I can, because I think this deck has a lot of potential, it's like semi-rush. And it's kind of anti-meta, so I kind of want to see more of it. So, yeah. Someone do better than me at this, because I want to see this, I want to see Ghosties rush with Night Rose top and freak the meta out. Thanks.